um, so for, for me, when I think about the mother, the mother is essentially an expression of space, right? And for those of you who join me for Medicine Buddha, you know, we've been exploring the father as well, you know? So the mother represents space. The father represents um, the illusion of form, which I'm not gonna get so much into the sacred father work um, in this session, but to say that the mother and the father are in this kind of binary mirrors of each other. Um, so this is not to say that the father principle is outside of space because the father is also an expression of space as well as the mother, you know, but there are particular kind of subtleties that the mother and the father represent within this binary in Tantra. Um, and so when we talk about the mother, when we start practicing with the mother, we're talking about how do we move into space and movement, you know, and fluidity, you know, particularly. And how do we transcend these relative traumas that we associate with our like birth parents, right? You know, with figures or people in our life who have embodied or who have attempted or tried to embody this, this identity, this location of our mothers, you know, our caretakers and nurturers and whomever. And I think when we come to mother practice, um, we have to really, really, really move beyond the traps and the trappings around the trauma that we um, experience around, you know, caretaking and parenting. Um, traditionally in Tibetan Buddhist side of mother practice, particularly when we talk about Tara practice, um, and also um, the Tibetan kind of method of meta loving kindness, you know, these practices are actually very much tied into one's actual physical mother, you know. Um, and so you have a heavy kind of connection between one's mother and the practice of the mother in Tibetan Buddhism, which as Tibetan Buddhism came to countries like America, many people found that to be quite problematic, <laughs> you know, um, considering some of the, the tough relationships we've had with our mothers or the person right, we've identified as like principal caretakers, right? But it's not just having a difficult relationship with caretakers or our mothers, it's also struggling with maybe the experience of not having the care that we needed, you know, growing up, you know? And that's another trauma that we bring into the practice. Like we don't know what it feels like to be cared for, right, you know? alongside with those of us who've had difficult relationships with care, you know, and, you know, a kind of a mothering relationship that we've experienced and maybe survived, right? And so you, you'll start hitting up against that. You'll start pushing up against that, that, that trauma, really. And what we're trying to do in our practice is actually move into the essence of the mother, move into the experience of space, move into the experience um, of love, right? Move into the, into the experience of fluidity. Um, to allow ourselves to trust the inherent wisdom and intelligence um, of this cosmic, sacred consciousness of the mother. So much of the practice is our willingness 
and our consent and being tended to um, by the experience of space itself. And we have, again, you know, we have trauma around space, right? You know, because we have developed a sense of who we are based upon the energy of contraction of shutting down, right? And of course, ego, the sense of self is really a part of that contraction, right? And so when we start talking about the practice of the mother, we're actually talking about how we can release this fixation to the sense of, uh, to the sense of ego to begin to experience an expansion of our consciousness into the cosmic consciousness of the mother. And that's scary because again, we've self-identified with this experience um, of contraction and ego and shutting down, you know? And so when we expand into space, that is actually quite destabilizing um, because it begins to disrupt identity. Like we don't know who we are when we're in space and to be in space is also to be, to experience freedom. So initially, when we hear words like freedom and space, like we get a little bit nervous because for many of us, we don't know what that is. It's very abstract, right? Um, and that's fine. Like it's supposed to be a really abstract experience because we're actually trying to develop the experience. Like, so we can talk about it, but talking about it isn't gonna get us there. Right, what's going to get us into the experience of the mother is the experience of practice itself. So we're moving beyond the conceptual into the experience, right? So it's like we can only be pointed over and over and over again towards the experience, excuse me, but it is really our labor of practice that helps us to move expand into the experience itself. Expanding into the experience of, again, space, but also the experience of emptiness as well. And emptiness is also a very loaded conceptual abstract um, concept as well. You know? But the emptiness and space, right, for me, I usually talk about together because they can be really skillful ways that point me a little more um, directly to where I'm going, right? It, 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 it sets us in the right direction, you know, I think. Um, now the father principle in this is that the father, for me, and this is like my theorizing, as well. So like, I can't really point you to anything <laughs> that you can read more about, you know, because it's coming out of my head. But um, the father represents how form can become a doorway to liberation if we realize the illusion of form. So form is an obstacle for us because we think that form is real. And when we think that form is real, then that gives rise to the experience of materialism, right? So we have this extremism on one hand being materialism, on the other being nihilism, right? Nihilism, complete emptiness, which is not the case, right? Materialism being complete realness. On the father side of this, which is materialism, you know, what we're trying, what the father, the practice of the father is trying to get us to do is to recognize the illusion of emptiness 
So we enter into the experience of spaciousness and freedom. You enter into the experience of the mother, which again is also the experience of the father as well. So right now, actually, I'm working on a theory, as I've just said, a theory of the sacred father, um, which I'm sure will be met with much, much enthusiasm. <laughs> Since I have been told over and over again for many years that there is no such thing as a sacred father. And that is an expression of trauma. You know? So what we're having to do, particularly, I know for those of you who join me in multiple spaces, you've heard bits and pieces of this, but just for those of you who are just new, to, you know, just to this space, you know, I just wanna just kind of um, just point out something I talk about all the time, which is um, that in the relative, right? In the relative experience, which we are having now, the relative experience is about balance, right? Tantra skillfully uses duality to cultivate the experience of freedom. Skillfully uses dualism and the binary to get us free, right? And of course, for me, my root sutra is the Heart Sutra, which really talks about the binary in this way, extremism, right? Because we're being asked to identify the extremes, the dualism, and then we're also being asked to come into the middle of this dualism, right? And that middle way, which is Buddha Dharma, right, is the experience you know, of getting free when we come back into the middle way, where it's, it's this and it's that and it's everything together. So when I talk about the binary of the mother and the father, right, we have to enter back into relationship with how the sacred father arises for us uh, and, and the relative, right? Which means for all of us, Right, we have to do the labor of moving through the trauma that uh, that arises from really the ways in which the embodiment of the sacred father has been disrupted in the relevant, and that disruption has given rise to patriarchy. Um, patriarchy is an expression that, and, and with all systems of abuse and power and violence, right? All these systems are expressed from this fundamental misunderstanding of form. You know, that form is real. When something becomes so real, it becomes solid and rigid, right? And so when it becomes rigid, it becomes a foundation for violence and harm. You know, particularly, in our situation, when form is illusionary. So when we make something real, then we're creating um, what I've often called the carceral state or samsara. Um, and samsara becomes this experience of being trapped because we have believed in the realness of everything. And when something is real, what can you do with it? You know, if you believe that everything is real and permanent, like what, how can you possibly dream of something different happening? So when we confuse, when we get really confused about form, you know, that's when the sacred father actually lapses into this experience um, of violence. Yeah. And so all of us, 
right, are survivors of the violence of patriarchy. And therefore, like when we think about this idea of the sacred father, um, we get real nervous about thinking about that. So we revert to the practice of the mother and we say the mother is everything, you know? And I think that's been fine for us to experience healing. It was, this is exactly what I had to do in my practice um, was to submit myself fully to um, a mother lineage. You know, I had to submit myself to a lineage that really focused on the practice of the mother and all her aspects, particularly Kali, um, Durga, um, uh, Tara, you know, just a name, just a few. Um, but um, Chinamasta, you know, has been a really important expression of the mother for me. Um, Mary Magdalene has been an important expression of the mother, as well as ayahuasca, of course, that, you know, we just identify as plant medicine, but ayahuasca is an expression of the mother as well as a plant medicine. I mean, there's just a few forms of the mother that I practice with. Um, but just kind of going back and saying that, like, I had to retreat into the mother in order to heal or to be, at least begin the healing um, from the trauma of surviving the violence of the father, of patriarchy. And I think one of the things that I'm trying to do in terms of like the sacred relationship between the mother and the father is to embody both, you know, but particularly to embody this expression of the sacred father and to rediscover that, you know, and to, to rediscover that and to place that, that experience back into relationship with the, with the mother. And that's the age that we're in. You know, we're coming back into balance because we're out of balance right now. You know, um, the true balance, you know, that we're seeking is when the mother and the father are in balance and they're relevant. You know, not when we're having to always kind of take refuge in the experience of the mother you know, because the experience of the sacred father is just, it's overwhelming, you know. So one of the things, one of the principles of samsara um, in terms of experiencing liberation from samsara is that we actually have to experience, we have to come back into balance. Because again, the Buddha Dharma path of freedom is about the middle way. So it's coming in from extremisms, right? So it's coming in back into the middle where we're able to start balancing all these experiences, these energies and holding space for it, right? When we're able to do that, then the experience of awakening begins to, to dawn, to, to awaken you know, for us. But so much, you know, getting back particularly to the sacred mother, so much of the sacred mother is really the experience of heartbreak. <laughs> like it's, you know, when we're moving into this relationship with the mother, we're, we're moving through the suffering. We're not bypassing anything. You know, so when we start practicing, you know, often, you, you know, people say, oh, like this is really uncomfortable. Like this is a lie. I thought the mother was supposed to feel good. You know, the mother is, does, is, you know, does feel great. But I can't get to the mother if I'm always bypassing the suffering. I have to realize that the suffering is as much an expression of emptiness as the mother is. You know, again, coming back to the heart sutra. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Form is no other than emptiness, emptiness is no other than form. Right? So even my suffering, we can say this, even my suffering is an expression of the mother. 
and that the mother awakens not necessarily when we realize the nature of suffering, but maybe it begins to change when we start understanding that even, even this discomfort, even in this discomfort, the mother is expressing herself. You know, the mother is here. The mother is here because everything is expression of emptiness and space. So even in experiencing trauma, I can connect to the expression of the mother, right? And the expression of the mother is again, this experience of emptiness and space that I can connect to as well. You know, for those of you who are coming, you know, more specifically out of Tibetan Buddhism, the Tibetan Buddhist side of this, you know, we, we talk about how everything is an expression of the Lama's mind. You know, and that's again, a, a guru yoga practice, you know, developing devotion to not, not to the physical teacher, but to the mind of the teacher, which is the mind of the Buddha, which is the expression of emptiness and space, which is our mind as well. So the answer to every koan ever is emptiness. <laughs> That's the, that's the cliff notes to unlock every cool one. You'll get emptiness. Just, just say emptiness. When you're Zen master, it's just like, you know, what's the sound of one hand clapping? Emptiness. <laughs> I don't know many cool ones, actually. I've practiced a few, um, but it always comes back to emptiness, I think. But of course, cool ones, like any other practice, it's not about getting the right answer. It's about embodying the truth of the teaching, that's the point of the koan, you know? And the same way for those of you who are just finishing consuming the world with me, you know, the lojong, the mind training slogans are about embodiments. You know, how do you live these teachings? You know, how do they become a part of your body? You know, um, in the same way that the mother becomes a part um, becomes an embodiment that we begin to live, you know, as well. So I wanted to um, work with uh, Tara today, and just to uh, to remind you. Um, that Rachel Wooten has a monthly class on Tara. She's written a book on Tara, which I, it's, your Tara book is in the other room. I have it on display in my living room. So when people come, by the way, no one comes in my house, by the way, but when people, in my mind, when I have guests over, like they're able to see all the books from my friends, you know, um, particularly for my friends who like to send me their books, particularly if I endorse them. That's a really great thing to do if someone endorses your book, is to send them a copy of your book. If I don't say anything about your book, I haven't received a copy. Uh, but anyway, so that's a whole other side conversation we'll put to the side there. But Rachel has a really wonderful book um, around Tara and a monthly practice group here in Bumi Sparsha that you can get more support. You know, so what I'm doing um, in these sessions is really just a very general, expansive exploration of the mother principle and tantric practice, um, and just doing different aspects um, of mother and exploring actually different expressions of the mother. So Tara, you know, but I want to do Kali, you know, Durga, uh, Lakshmi. I want to do Mary Magdalene. Um, for those of you who have practiced with ayahuasca, I have a practice connecting to the expression of the mother and ayahuasca as well, but we'll you know, get to that down the line. So I know that many of us will be getting to practice with plant medicines. Um, not all plant medicines are expressions of the mothers, of the mother, you know, there are plant medicines that are actually expressions of the father as well, which is quite powerful. So these dualities are, are everywhere, right? But what we're being asked to do is to say, yes, 
there is this duality here, and these dualities are an expression of one experience of emptiness in space. Right? So it's like a triangle. So the base of a triangle is like all these different practices, right? You know, and there's a, you know, of course, there's different angles at the base, right? And so you can see those as the, you know, as the father and the mother, right? But as the lines go up to form the third angle of the triangle, you, everything comes back to one point, and that one point is emptiness, space, energy. You have to always remember that, like as we're getting into these kind of sacred dualities, that these sacred dualities all come to a point, you know, or it can be like an inverted thing, like so you can say that the the bottom point, you know, is at the the bottom, and that emptiness, this point here, expands out into these different expressions across the binary. But regardless of how you think about it, you always have to understand that they always come back to the fundamental expression of emptiness. Uh, in my new book, and New Saints, which is coming out sometime next year, whenever I finish it, um, <laughs> I'm in that point of like writing books where it's just like, why am I writing this? You know, like why, who, who like agrees to write a fucking book? Like that's where I'm at right now in the process. Why am I doing this? <laughs> so please pray for me. That's what I'm actually saying. Please pray for me to get through this book. Um, but and you know, in New Saints, I talk a lot about God, right? And I'm really trying to create some language around God as an expression of emptiness, space, and love to really try to create some path of healing for those of us coming out of a lot of woundedness uh, from you know monotheologies. Uh, so anyhow. What we're trying to do, again, to reemphasize is to connect to the emptiness, to connect to the space, and to allow ourselves to expand into that space. You know, when I say ourselves, I mean consciousness and awareness to expand. And that means that we're just we're moving into this experience of holding everything. You know, how do we hold everything? Because that's how we get to these experiences, right? And probably later on, you know, later in the year, maybe we'll start doing particular father practices, you know, um, from, from New Saints, the new book, um, which is really the same kind of practice, moving into the emptiness from the experience of the sacred father. Okay. So as with many practices, we're going to start off very similarly to mostly everything that I do because um, I, for me, moving, moving from the relative into the experience of the emptiness means that I have to really touch the earth first. Like this is a really important part of the practice. Like when you want to do emptiness practice, start with the earth, start with the relative. Ask the earth, you know, are the expression of the earth element to hold you as you expand into emptiness. So I know many of you, and well, not many of you, I don't know many of you, but I've had many conversations with people who feel as if they move too quickly and intensely into emptiness, which can be disembodiment, right? Which can be also kind of an expression of disassociation, right? So this is a way for us to create some kind of a safeguard, you know, just like, okay, connecting to the seat, connecting to the earth, asking the earth to hold you as we move up. You know, so you feel the earth 
or to use this language, you fill the earth as you move into heaven. And I think that's really quite possible, right? And so when you're ready to come out of emptiness, the earth is right there, you know, actually helping you, helping to ground you back into the relative, right? Um, another part of this practice is, of course, the seven homecomings. Um, and we're going to do, we're going to awaken a little bit of Kundalini as well. Um, so I'm going to tell you we're doing this instead of just like dropping it on you, which is what I usually do. But this is how I was taught Kundalini. <laughs> like, like no one said Kundalini until like years later when I was like, what's Kundalini? And people were like, oh, you've been doing it. <laughs> um, but Kundalini really being like part of the expression of the mother, really particularly the expression of the mother that we can experience in the body. You know, awakening Kundalini, this experience of Kundalini at our base chakra, which is really around our tailbones. And Kundalini being an expression of Shakti. And Shakti, um, really so many definitions for Shakti, but for me, Shakti is really like the, the um, it's the energy that animates the expression of the mother, it's the spirit the energetic spirit of the mother, which for me is a really intense experience of love. So when Shakti is happening outside of the body, we call it Shakti, but when Shakti is awakening within our physical bodies, we, we start calling it Kundalini, a Kundalini Shakti, you know, to be more formal with it happening in the base of the spine. Of course, the um, traditional iconography of Kundalini are as two snakes, serpents wrapping around um, the central channel that runs from the root chakra up to um, the top of the head to the crown chakra. Um, so these snakes in iconography, these snakes um, awaken and begin to like curl themselves around the base of the spine. For some of us, when we experience Kundalini, we actually are experiencing a lot of joy, even bliss. So when you start getting really happy in the practice, that's a sign of Kundalini awakening. Um, and what we're, trying to do and practice is to hold Kundalini Shakti. Like we're trying to hold this experience. Um, the tantric view of the body is, one of the tantric views of the body is that this is a container that we're training to hold the energy of awakening. You know? If we're not training in breath pranayama, or if we're not training in asana practice, or if we're not training in meditation, um, we become, as we would say, a, a leaky container. Like we start leaking, you know? And the Tibetan tantric side, now I'm gonna be going, there's a whole bunch of traditions that I've been trained in. So I'm gonna be going back and forth <laughs> across. So I know many of you are coming from different aspects of tantra. So I'm trying to be inclusive. So on the Tibetan side of Tantra, you know, where so many of our practices are about learning how to strengthen, um, one, the central channel, but also to strengthen our subtle energy bodies to, to begin to hold the awakening of, um, of awakened energy, the, 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 the ignition of awakened energy, I would say. Kundalini being one of those, prana being, you know, what I actually consider in my practice, even a very neutral energy, but the energy, our life force energy, prana. You know, other schools of, of energy body work will say that prana 
um, that Shakti is an expression of prana, but deeply imbued with love, saturated with love, you know, turning into Shakti. So, you know, it depends on where we come from in these practices and what schools we've been trained in, you know. Um, but for me, like what has been really important is to get to the space where I'm just able to connect to these different expressions of energy, to prana, to kundalini, to shakti, right? And I've been really fortunate to, to have teachers who are just these like powerhouses of these energies. So I'm able to sit with people and train with people who have mastered like the, the awakening of these energies, right? You know, so my early experiences with um, Shakti were quite overwhelming, <laughs> you know, because it takes time to actually learn the quality of this energy and how to hold it and not react to it. You know, so we're trying to really disrupt reactivity. You know, and it gets wild, absolutely. This is when you're working with these really potent like cosmic universal energies and trying to channel this through the body, it gets real wild for some of us. But we're not trying to react, we're trying to hold space and allow. So when I practice the mother formally, I am just opening and allowing this energy to move through me. And this energy is like, it's a current, right? That I imagine it taking me into the heart of the mother. So let's let's um let's move into practice now. Um, just moving through you know some of the techniques that I've just mentioned and see see what happens. And we're going to be working with Tara. So we're going to, this is very much like Medicine Buddha, that we'll move, we'll set up our practice. And then we're going to spend some time working with Tara's mantra, um, which I will just have it here. I'll just put it right in the chat box for everyone. Um Tara, tu Tara, Ture. Soha, which is just a mantra to Tara. So this is the mantra for all the Taras. Um, but often when I'm practicing Tara, I'm, I'm focusing on green Tara, which green Tara is an expression of active compassion. You know, compassion is associated with the mother because compassion arises from our relationship to emptiness itself, right? Um, and space, emptiness and space. So there's no way for us to empathize with ourselves and others and to give rise to this wish for beings to be free from suffering if there's no space to do that in our experience. It's really hard to give a shit about other people when we don't have the energy or the resources to take care of ourselves, which is where many of us are right now in the world. We're trying to survive and we're being told to care about other people, which seems quite impossible, you know? So if there's no space, right, it's harder to care about others. And this is why compassion is associated with Tara and Tara being expression of the mother. All right. So beginning our practice, just really beginning with just forming an intention for practice. So why am I practicing? You know, why am I doing this? Right. And it's okay to, to say I want to experience the mother. You know? I think when we have an intention like that, you know, I think it's fine because the experience of the mother will actually open us up deeper into the experience of caring for ourselves and others. Right, so if I can just get to the mother, the mother 
will take care of everything else. And of course, another part of our work intention is to be of benefit, to help, you know, to reduce harm for myself, to reduce harm for others. Anything that we do has to have, anything in practice that we do has to have these two components, benefit for self and benefit for others, right? Because I believe that you can't help people until you understand how to help yourself. So always we, we can think about the collective as much as possible and we need to think about helping the collective as much as possible. And we also need to keep our care and our needs in the picture. When I want everyone to get free, which is ultimately why I practice, I want everyone to be free. I also want to be free <laughs> as well. You know, if it's good enough for everyone else, it has to be good enough for me, you know? We're just forming those intentions to begin with. And for some of us, we can actually start connecting to the mother in this moment. Because when we start thinking about care, when we start thinking about um, helping, we're expanding into space. We're expanding into emptiness. So the initial rising of the mother is happening right now, actually. And so when I want everyone to be free, that's the birth of the mother. When I want everyone to be free from suffering, that's the awakening of the mother. When I began to open to the heartbreak, the discomfort, the suffering, Right, that's also the awakening of the mother. Because as we open to the heartbreak, the discomfort, we're also opening to the space and the space as the expression of the mother begins to hold, to take care of, tend to this deep discomfort. Right, so as I open and just experiences of how the world is right now actually began to arise, just all the violence that we've been experiencing, you know, cost of living, you know, all this, everything that many of us are struggling with, as this begins to rise for me, I am actually also tuning into the space that's also holding all of this discomfort. And again, this is the expression of the mother at the beginning of practice right now. I know some of you have been practicing with the mother for many years, right? And so this initial part of our practice may be a stage where you're just able just to go right there, right into the expression of the mother, which is fine. But over time, like this becomes an experience where as soon as you turn your mind into compassion or turn your mind into space, you begin to connect to the expression of the mother, to the consciousness of the mother. The 
just one more moment here. I'm just exploring to see if you can begin to open, connect to a mother. And again, the signs of the awakening of the mother are around this awakening of discomfort, of different forms of suffering maybe, but also the awakening of compassion for self and for others. as also letting go of reacting to everything that's arising, including thinking about, including pushing away or grabbing onto, just allowing things to arise, noticing them, experiencing what we can, and knowing that this is also an expression of the mother. And this is also an expression of love. And love in this sense, meaning just holding, accepting, or allowing. You know, love as this ultimate expression is just holding, it's just being. It's just this profound fundamental acceptance of everything. Just being. That's the experience of love and the ultimate. And can you allow yourself to be? Can you allow your mind and all the material of your mind, thoughts and emotions just to be? Or can you allow your body just to be? Without reacting, just allowing. Can you allow your breath to be? Right, and so maybe you're beginning to experience that there's a, a boundary or a border that we cross over, where we, we move from conceptualizing into experience of everything. But that, that experience of everything feeling supported, feeling held. Like that's, that's the experience of one of the experiences of the mother. And allowing whatever emotions to rise and fall within this holding.
And for some of us, this may be where we want to stay. You know, this may be where you need to be right now, and that's great. You know? And as we move deeper into the practice, I really encourage you to feel as if you can choose to stay where you need to stay, right? You know, staying in an experience that feels like you're, you're meeting the mother or experience that feels generative and spacious. You can stay there. You don't have to go anywhere else. Because all we're trying to do is experience expression of the mother here. But to move deeper, for those of you who like to move deeper, I invite you to shift your attention to the weight of your body. Again, making contact with the seats, feeling the seat rising to meet you. And sometimes in my practice, I imagine that the seat is an expression of the mother, that the seat is rising to hold me, to take care of me. And this is also a really important practice for us to see how so many things around us are taking care of us. That our seats are taking care of us, the floor is taking care of us, the air, the oxygen is taking care of us, the light is taking care of us, our home is taking care of us, right? Our bodies are taking care of us. All of these can be expressions of the mother. And if we can have that kind of reflective practice, then we would say um, that we're shifting Shakti actually into these experiences of care. Right? So when I think that the seat is caring for me, I'm actually mentally, energetically shifting Shakti into the seat and the, sh and the seat becomes sacred, becomes an expression of love. And some of you are already quite deep in Shakti already. So, but the world, everything can become an expression of Shakti as well if we just allow ourselves to think that. So, when you're ready, actually shifting your attention even deeper and connecting to the earth. And so if we're connected physically to the, to, to the floor under us, that's the connection we can begin with. But what we're trying to do is shift the energy of our awareness, right? And attention being more of a concentrated expression of awareness. But the either or, awareness or attention, we're touching down into the energetic expression of the earth. Right? And we can move through a physical connection to the earth if you're lying on the floor. Or, you know, for me right now, I have one foot on the floor. So I can move through that foot to connect to the stability of the floor under me, which is an expression of the earth itself. connecting to the energy of stability, foundation, groundedness, beginning to relate to the earth, also as an expression of the mother. So as you're connecting to the earth, can you feel it? expression of the mother as the earth. And 
And again, moving through you know, what we think about the earth, you know, what we think about the harm that the earth is experiencing, moving through that to touch to touch into the consciousness of the earth, of the land, of the mother. And again, when we, when we get confused by these forms of thoughts and emotions that are arising for us, when we get confused about that form, right, that is a misunderstanding, you know, of the form. When we don't see the form, you know, these thoughts and emotions, experiences as being expressions of emptiness itself. And that's when we start getting trapped and run of it. So again, the expression of the father in this moment is how form is actually opening into this more expansive experience of space and emptiness. So we're going to go deeper into the practice. And again, staying where you need to stay. I'll invite you to call into your space, your homecoming circle. For those of you who are new to this, I essentially, I invite you just to call into your space any being that loves you, who wants you to be free, wants you to be safe. You don't have to know who these beings are. It's simply in your mind saying, I open this space for all beings who love me, who care for me, to be here, to come sit with me, to form a circle around me. And I also ask all beings who do not, or who cannot rather in this moment take care of me and love me, I ask you to not enter into this space. The space is only open for beings who love me. And I welcome those beings. Of course, these beings can be actual people in our lives who love us. They can be spirits. They can be ancestors. Any deity, angels, saints, whatever feels appropriate for you, invite those beings into the space. And imagine that you just feel this energy of care around you from these beings because these beings themselves are also expressions of the mother. We begin to imagine 
for these beings who are our benefactors now. We're beginning to radiate this energy of deep care into the circle around us. And what does that feel like for you? How do you imagine that? That care that's being radiated? How do you feel it? Or how do you connect to that care? And slowly this energy of care is beginning to be absorbed by your body. So you can just experience this energy of care slowly kind of sinking into or infusing into your skin, your bones and muscles. Feeling it sinking into the organs. Into your lungs, right? Into your bloodstream. And so you're beginning to end, inhale and exhale. This energy of care. You feel the energy of care deeply saturated in your blood. So you, this blood that's enriched with care is just circulating into every cell of your body. And drinking deeply, imagining that you're thirsty and hungry because you are, we all are. You're thirsty for care. And so drinking deeply into this well of care, there are better factors that often case. Imagining again, this care being saturated and delivered to the, to the most driest, Parts of our experience. Just drink. And for many of us, this is <clears throat> the stage of practice that we really need to spend a lot of time in. Just accepting, just drinking in, taking in, being saturated by, this is enough for many of us for a long time just to do this. just to feel deeply nourished and watered, doing this as much as we can because this is the healing that we're trying to get to, to, to feel so utterly, deeply nurtured and loved. Loved. We start letting go into the space. We can begin to trust the space more. And this is how the mother comes to gather us. By creating the conditions where we feel so deeply nourished and cared for, that we feel safe enough to expand 
into her heart. And so at this point, I want to actually offer just our, our short mantra practice. And you can, your practice is listen and chant along in your space. <clears throat> As we move into the mantra practice, just continuing with allowing yourself to be deeply nurtured, deeply watered. And another kind of visualization that you can use is actually being watered. Like I feel, you know, this practice, it's just like being filled with kind of a warm, like enriched water. Right. I just feel this like water being poured into me. Right. And for those of us <clears throat> um, initiated into the practice of Mother Oshun, like this is also an experience of, of Oshun. Right. The water, the nurturing the watering and the nurturing. And the sweetness that can come from being nurtured and watered like this are all expressions of Mother Oshun. So as we move into the mantra, just for a couple of minutes, just allow yourself to be deeply nurtured. <clears throat> oh, so Thank you. 
Just for a moment to step just further as we wrap up our session. Imagine that this deep care that we've been drinking from has completely oversaturated our bodies. And we, our physical bodies, begin to dissolve. in this deep expression of care, which is the heart of the moment.
So just allowing ourselves now to come back into the space, returning your attention back to the seat, the earth under us, and allowing this experience of foundation and groundedness to really gently stabilize us, bring us back into the moment, into the timeline. When you're ready, you can open your eyes, your eyes are closed, but you can also move through some really gentle, slow movements to really begin to reawaken the body. Just to close out the session, I offer just the dedication of marriage. That we thank all of the elements of our practice from our inner factors, the earth. We offer gratitude to this community that's gathered to practice together. We also offer gratitude to the mother. We pray that the energy, the experiences that we cultivated in the session be extended out to all beings who were not able to practice with us, that all beings may have an experience of the mother, which is a deep experience of being cared for, tended to and experiencing safety. And that we all achieve enlightenment as quickly as possible. Thank you all so much uh, for your practice. Um, please join me tomorrow for Medicine Buddha, which will be much like this, but with more rhetoric around the matrix. So have some rhetoric about the matrix again. So anyway, Thank you all so much um, for being here. Um, and um, we will be back next month or maybe sooner. But the mother wills us, the mother will. So Anjana, it's good to see you. Anjana, Anjana and our Indian Sangha. Astrid and our Canadian saga. <laughs> it was an international group. Where are my UK people at? All right. Well, thank you, everyone. And I um, hope to see you tomorrow. Um, and join me for any other experience or event that I'm doing which you all know more about than I do. <laughs> Literally, I have no idea what I'm doing until like five minutes before I do and I get emails asking me where I'm at. <laughs> all right, thank you everyone. Oh, um, we're gonna figure out how to make this recording available in some fashion. So you'll get that email, we'll figure it out. So you'll have a recording. It'll be on our Vimeo page, which I posted in the chat. Oh my God, it's already organized. <laughs> we'll see, pray about it, pray on it. <laughs> well, it's good to see Brandon here. You, it's been a while. This is, the, this is the, the benefit of being on Zoom. You can see everyone. Anyway, I'm gonna let you all go. Please continue to have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you tomorrow for Medicine Buddha.